describe what play therapy is to people who maybe need a play therapy? So I like to describe play therapy as an externalizing of a child's internal world. They don't have the ability to express themselves the way that you or I do as adults. And so by using play as their, their natural medium, they have the opportunity to get those things out and play it at a distance rather than it dancing around on the inside. What I love about play therapy is you get to see the joy and the spontaneity come out and it's so natural. Even for children who have really tremendous trauma, they're able to engage in such a gentle way in this playful process, especially when it's done in a way by the play therapist in a way that is um, gentle and maybe only semi-directive rather than um, moving away from the, the talk therapy model or the cognitive models where they're much more structured and directive, but it's not something that the average five, seven year old can track, especially if they have any degree of trauma and wounding, it becomes even more difficult and challenging for them to track in the cognitive if their brains have not, um, if they don't have a, a sense of felt safety. So what is Santray therapy? So Santray is is not actually a part of play therapy, though play therapists use sand tray. Sand tray originally was called sand play therapy and has origins in uh, Jungian and Erickson, and so lots of psychodynamic and um, unconscious pieces. The great thing about sand tray is you have miniatures, and so I have I have a few, but mm -hmm. I this is a king and queen. And so there'll, there'll be people, but also elements. So here's um, a, a geode that's been cracked open, and you know, I have a, a wizard here. Um, fences and skulls, all, all types of things. So my collection, for example, has about a thousand or so um, miniatures. Mm -hmm. so the process of sand tray is getting into that unconscious material. Um, oftentimes what, what Union called, or Carl Jung called the uh, collective unconscious, that's working in the tray. And so the beautiful thing about sand tray is it's even more um, at a distance than play is. So it is even safer. The material that comes up is oftentimes more powerful, however, in, than in play therapy uh, because it, it, is, it brings to life nonverbal um, and emotional content and so it can be quite triggering, especially by an untrained therapist. When a therapist uses sand tray in too directive of a way, it forces people too close to that unconscious material that has come out in their tray, and they might actually have a, an ad reaction from that. So engaging in sand tray in a very um, sacred and slow process is the best way. Right. But you know, I don't, I don't know that you can ethically work with children unless you are well-versed in play therapy. So I get my first job in, a, or my first internship at a place that focused on death and dying and bereavement specifically for children. And what I learned very quickly is that I had zero background in how to work with children effectively. And so what I did is I went um, all over the state of Texas getting training in play therapy and really focusing on, on reading as much as I could, getting supervision, because I, I knew that what I was trained in, in a typical master's program that's a really talk therapy oriented, was not going to work for children. I mean, that became apparent the first few kids that I worked with, and so I was really scrambling. I was very blessed to be part of an organization that had it didn't have a sand tray at the time, but it did have a play and art and drama and some other physical activities. So I began to use art actually first because it was the easiest way to engage children. And then I slowly added in play to that. And then after play, then I added um, sand tray to what I do. The Association for Play Therapy has recently announced that they have a path to become a registered play therapist for school counselors. And I just wonder what you think about that. So this is huge news. It, play therapy and being able to have a designation as a school counselor in play therapy is really huge. You know, one of the things that I'm really big into is advocacy. And I've said for a long time that the way to change the world is by working with teachers, by, by getting them in that system. So now we will have, hopefully, um, a number of 
very talented school counselors who also are clinical minded, who can not only work with children, but who can also facilitate with teachers and, and do some of these experiential activities with them to really change the entire school environment. And it, you know, as, a, as another bonus for those who can't afford um, to go and see an outside therapist mm-hmm. or can't even get on a, on a government assistance or for whatever reason are unable to see a therapist outside of school, having someone who's qualified to see them is going to be a real treasure. And I, I hope it improves our school systems overall. Um, so 